This is another question that checks to see if you understand how different types of orbitals overlap to form bonds of different types. Upon reading it, we find we're asked to draw and label the orbitals that make up the sigma bonding framework of hydrogen cyanide. Remember, sigma bonds are formed by end-on overlap of orbitals. Then we have to do the same thing for the pi bonding framework. Pi bonds are formed by side-on overlap. In planning your approach, examine the provided Lewis structure. Both the nitrogen atom and the carbon atom have two electron domains. This means that they're sp hybridized. Since two atomic orbitals are required to get sp hybridization, both carbon and nitrogen have two sp hybridized orbitals that can be used to form sigma bonds. Also, don't forget that the hydrogen atom has a 1s orbital that can be used to form a sigma bond as well. The fact that both carbon and nitrogen are sp hybridized also tells us that they still each have two pure p orbitals that were not used in hybridization. These can be used for pi bonding. Now that we know how many orbitals we're dealing with and what type they are, we can begin solving the problem. Start with the sigma bonding framework and draw a line to represent the plane of the molecule. Nitrogen is here, carbon here, and hydrogen here. We know from the Lewis structure that there is a sigma bond between the carbon and nitrogen, so let's start there. Use one of nitrogen's sp orbitals to point towards carbon, and use one of carbon's sp orbitals to point towards nitrogen. That end-on overlap forms a sigma bond. Carbon has one sp hybridized orbital left, and from the Lewis structure we can see that it needs to form a sigma bond with the hydrogen atom. Since carbon's two hybridized orbitals are sp, they must have a linear geometry. So draw carbon's second sp orbital so that it's in line with the first, and point it towards hydrogen. Then overlap hydrogen's unhybridized 1s orbital with it to form a second sigma bond. Now we're just left with one sp orbital from nitrogen. Draw it so that we get a linear geometry around nitrogen, and use it to hold the lone pair. Now that we're finished the sigma bonding framework, let's move on to the pi bonds. Draw the same line to start and label the positions of the atoms. Place one of nitrogen's p orbitals perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. Remember, we want these ones to overlap side on. And add one of carbon's orbitals in the same way. These will overlap to form a pi bond. Now both nitrogen and carbon still each have a p orbital left. We can form another pi bond perpendicular to the last one, like this. Be sure to indicate how they overlap. Okay, check that you haven't missed anything. We still need a few more labels, an s orbital, sp orbitals, and p orbitals. Now we're done.